guys welcome back to my channel it's Tilly here if you're new to my channel this is my face that you will see four to six times a week if you like this video please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and wet that notification bell so you will never miss another video from me today is of course going to be a gluten free living episode and I've been told things this week that I was like okay I'm gonna not get upset with you because you don't know but I am doing 20 different things to not say to somebody that has IBS, a dairy intolerance, slash lactose intolerance, and a gluten intolerance. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Number one, this one drives me absolutely bonkers. If you do not have celiac, you should not go gluten free. <sighs> okay. So just because someone does not have celiac does not mean that they don't have a reaction to gluten, doesn't mean they don't have an intolerance like I do. So believe it or not, even if you don't have celiac, it still upsets your insides, which is gastritis. So like when I had my biopsy and endoscopy, no, there wasn't like the extreme damage, but you could tell um, that I had gastritis because it's like irritated, like little red spots. And that's because of the gluten and that's because, you know, it wasn't destroying my insides as much, but it still causes me suffering. So I tell people, I'm like, you know what? It's, it's my prerogative. You know, I was told to switch, keep a food diary and see how things go. People tell me this and I'm like, you know, sometimes it's not that bad because I know it's definitely helped me cut off the sweets, you know, all that stuff. But most importantly, I'm eating healthier, so that's another plus going gluten-free. This next one has to do with IBS, and when I first told people, when they asked me, you know, hey, what's up? Why were you in the hospital? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I told them I had IBS, and they were like, what's that called? And I was like, irritable bowel syndrome. And the next thing I get is, does that mean you have to poop a lot? Now... My first response was like laughing and I was saying no and then they looked at me like why is she laughing like this this is kind of a gross topic but no no this question people have asked me about it more and more since the past three years like that I was diagnosed with it and I'm just sitting there like no it doesn't mean I have to poop a lot that's not even the only factor into IBS like that's not the only thing going on here so this drives me crazy because everyone automatically assumes because it says bowel in the title that that's what it's about and it's not so I guess if you're one of those people that doesn't know you know what your friend or your family member is I guess suffering from please do your research before you say something like that because that actually genuinely irritates people that have IBS because we're like no that does not mean you have to go to the bathroom a lot like that's number three is a combination of all three because symptoms act up when you stress out I'm always told to stop stressing and I cannot stress this enough to you guys I am a big stressor but that's just who I am I can't really stop that so a lot of people think that IBS comes from stress, but really the actual cause of IBS, gluten intolerance, and lactose intolerance, there's no cause. So stress is not a cause. Um, even if I were to completely stop stressing at all, and I've had this happen, I was not stressed, I was not worried, I was not emotional, I was seriously chilling out with my dog watching a movie and I started getting extremely sharp abdominal pains out of nowhere and I had to run to the bathroom. Stress is a tiny factor of all three of these different conditions and number four, you did this to yourself. Mostly this has been told to me by family, but no, technically mostly technically I did not do this to myself I've been told that I did this to myself because I stressed and I worried all the time like I said previously stress and being worried is not the ultimate cause to these conditions for the love of all that is holy number five so you can't eat anything 
this came up mostly so at first it came from myself like I said this to myself when I was told about IBS the lactose free and the gluten intolerance business like that's the first that popped in my head like oh my gosh there's nothing that I can eat but after I got done saying that other people said that to me and then I kind of you know had to prove them wrong because I was like look you have your gluten-filled muffins over here. I have my gluten-free blueberry muffins over here. It's the same thing. It just doesn't have gluten in mine. And yes, there's a lot that I have to change. But I can still eat everything, okay, mostly everything that everyone else can eat. Like, everyone else's food's over here. And I have an abundance of food over here. Guaranteed, my food is actually considered to be more healthy compared to theirs and I have a prime example because these were so good you guys so everyone knows the candy Whoppers everyone knows Whoppers so everyone else has their Whopper candy the you know candy brand and I came across these things called quinoa puffs and they were you know puff quinoa and you know they're covered in chocolate and that's over in my area so I was scared because they came out like they were pretty they were pretty big you know and I tasted them I was like holy cow these taste like Whoppers like it's so good but it was quinoa it wasn't malt and it had dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate so it was healthier for you and I was like these are so good oh my word I so bet you eat bland food no I do not and I will tell everyone why I do not because maybe if people start watching this video they will know that I do not so everyone assumes that people with IBS gluten intolerance and a dairy slash lactose intolerance have to eat bland food or have bland drinks that's not true because now on seasoning bottles and you know the little containers they will have the little label that says gluten free all you have to do is look for the labels that specifically say gluten free and you can season your food and then for juices and everything make sure it's gluten free um for people that have a lactose intolerance or dairy intolerance you guys there are so many options you have your rice cream milk your almond milk that comes in regular vanilla chocolate and dark chocolate you have banana milk there's lactose free milk like there's so much that you guys can still have it's so much that i have like i have all these things here is your food. Some people say this and it doesn't bother me, but some people say it in a way that they're disgusted or grossed out or just weirded out by it. And then I end up having an attitude take over me and I just look at them and I'm like, gee, thanks. Like that's, that's kind of rude. You know, like my mom's best friend, she says it in a way that doesn't bother me. She's like, okay, well, I made your stuff and it's right here. I really hope that you like it. Can you taste test it? You know, and I love that, especially, you know, for my sister's graduation party. She made amazing stuff. She tried it. She didn't like it. But there was gluten-free mac and cheese, gluten-free pasta salad. She made me gluten-free ham sliders. And we had, you know, these gluten-free, they were like, um, they were like muffins that had like cinnamon on them and everything. And it was just really, really good, especially that pasta salad. Oh my word. When I have the recipe, I'm going to share it with you guys because it is so good. Like, it was amazing. And no dairy. None. The next thing is, that is so small. And this is referring to the little, like, TV dinners, like frozen dinners that you can get, you know, that's gluten-free. If I open the container and I see that it's small, I don't need other people to tell me that it's small. That just means I gotta go back to the store and get something else to go with that because I'm not gonna get filled up. A lot of people will come up to me and be like, that's so not gonna fill you up. Why did you get something so small? Does it look like I knew it was small? No, I did not know it was this small. The box made it look bigger. I guess that's a ploy that you know all stores use. That is so gross. Some things I'll agree with. So if you go to the store and you get like gluten-free mac and cheese pre-made, that's disgusting. I tried it. That is horrific. I, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. The noodles tasted grainy. You guys, I will never ingest that ever again. But 
a lot of the things that I think taste good, you know, other people taste and they're like, oh, that's nasty. I'm like, well, don't just say it out loud like that or be like, you know, you're gross for eating that. Like, I have to eat it. You don't have to eat it. So don't eat it if you don't have to, if you don't want to, if you want to try it, sure. But take your reaction somewhere else. Like, that's, that's rude, especially when you're in, like, basically a party full of people and you know, someone tries my food and they're like, oh, that's disgusting. You see me eating it. I mean, that's kind of embarrassing. Like, I, I really, I don't like when people do that. Sometimes it's funny. Like, if it's just me and, you know, a few people, like, that's fine. And you try it. Like, I'll end up, like, crying laughing because it's hilarious. But if we're in front of a bunch of people, I get extremely embarrassed because no one else is going gluten-free with me. I have the gluten-free, lactose-free, and IBS stuff going on. No one else in, like, where I hang out with has it or goes through it. So, I'm the only person that has to endure the reaction to those uh, gross comments and everything. Why are you eating gluten-free? This one probably isn't on the top list of what annoys me the most, but I will say what gets me is people think that I'm doing it for fun, and I'm not doing this for fun. Let me tell you guys, when I first found out I might have to go gluten-free, and I looked up, well, what all is gluten in? Because your arm just thinking that's like your bread and noodles and whatever, and I see this huge list. I didn't need people to ask me why because I felt really like self-conscious because you know it's your body you're talking about like they're questioning you about your decisions I got a message on social media as I was posting like food free meals and they're like well you don't look sick I'm like okay well people with IBS gluten intolerance and lactose intolerance don't look sick their sickness is inside their bias. Of course they're not going to see what's going on on the outside. People will question it and then they'll come back at you with different comments and basically try to put you in your place. But you guys, if you're making a switch and someone does this to you, just don't respond. Let them feel like, you know, they know what's going on. They're the boss. And then you can prove them wrong at a later time. Just, you know, basically focus it on you because you're the one making that decision. It's no one else's decision your life your body your decisions this one is one of the ones that gets me the most because there is so much i cannot physically explain until i am practically sitting down trying not to cry every time i breathe because i'm so bloated just try a little bit it can't be that bad and I've been told this with some gluten filled items and I'm sitting there like, look, I, I told you I can't have that. I cannot eat that. It's irritating because, you know, no one knows what I'm going through. No one knows what I feel except for, you know, the words that I give, but half the time the words don't even give it justice. So I tell people, I'm like, look, I said no, just go eat your food and I'll eat my food and just, you know, let me do my business. Keep that to yourself. Sometimes when you're going through the change, you need to talk to somebody, whether it's, you know, about your bowel movements, if it's about, you know, your reaction to some foods or anything like that, you know, sometimes you can't just keep that to yourself. You have to talk about it and people are going to look at you all judgmental and people looked at me all judgmental. I'm like, what, can I help you? Like, can I help you? This has nothing to do with you. Like AB conversation. You can leave now because it's rude. It's rude. And I get really, really frustrated and kind of fed up with people when they say things about this because if you're not going through it you really have no place to say anything about it and that may sound harsh but that's how i personally feel on the subject again didn't you just use the restroom if i am having a reaction to something that i ate i'm probably going to the restroom a good four or five times before it's actually like out of my system and i can start feeling okay again why are you so cranky gee I tell people, well, I probably accidentally ate something I'm not supposed to, so now it's having, you know, the after effects. A lot of people do not believe me when I say that, but let me tell you guys, it is normal if you accidentally ingest something that your body's not approving and you feel cranky and you start, like, getting snippy, 
that's normal. That's normal because I swear sometimes I would think that I'm on my cycle and I would have just finished my cycle but I accidentally eat some gluten, dairy, or anything that I'm not supposed to. And I am so rude. Like, I am rude. And there is nothing I can do about it until it is out of my system. Like, mentally, I know, like, hey, stop being mean to people. And my body is just like, oh, I'm so mad. So, get over it. That irritates my soul when people say, get over it. And I'm going to tell you guys why. You can't get over something that you're basically stuck with the rest of your life. So you have to make the best of it. You can't just get over and like, you know, be like, oh, I'm going to roll on over this and we're not going to do anything about it. You can't do that. I can't do that. None of us can do that. Saying get over it to somebody, especially when they're just starting out, is going to put them in a dark place. And I went in that dark place because I was told, get over it. You're throwing yourself a pity party. How... If anyone does not have a gluten intolerance, IBS, or a lactose intolerance, leave me in the comments down below. If someone told you to get over it and you were just making the change how you would feel, because I can almost guarantee no one is going to take a positive impact from that the first time that someone says it to you. IBS goes away eventually. Wrong. Once you are diagnosed with IBS and your body has decided that this is what it's going to do, this is the course it's taking you on, it will not go away. You can like baby it and you know you might not have any symptoms for a while and then you know they might come back and flare up. But it does not go away. You you have it the rest of your life and that's not it's not a scary thing. I mean, sometimes when you're going to eat something, about five, ten minutes later, you're running to the bathroom and you're going to sit there for a good, like, half hour. You know, it's not something you can get rid of. It's not just going to go away. Some people have theories, and I do mean theories, that you can make it go away. You can't make it go away. You can control it. You can baby it. You can make it that you might not have any symptoms, you know, for six months to a year, but it will never leave your system. You need to eat healthy, exercise, and stop stressing. Overall, this whole video, you guys, that's a lot for one person to just change in the snap of a finger. That is a lot to change for you to just start eating healthy, exercise, stop stressing, work on your mind health. It is too much to do at once. You cannot tell somebody, okay, well, you need to be doing this, 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 and this, this morning, and then the afternoon, do this, 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 and this. You can't, you cannot do that to your body because you're going to stress yourself out by trying to make yourself better. You have to take it one step at a time. Are you one of those health freaks going gluten-free? Okay, first of all, those of us that go gluten-free are not health freaks. We are not health freaks, so we are people trying to make our bodies better and live a healthier lifestyle. This irritates me, because just because we cut something out of our system that other people don't have to does not make us freaks, that just means that we know what's better for our body in comparison to everyone else. And that means that we know our body better than everyone else, because we're actually listening to it and doing what it wants us to do. If we have to cut out gluten, buy gluten. If we have to cut out dairy, Bye, dairy. If we have to watch everything that we eat, you know, as a whole, I'm doing all these hand gestures today. If we have to set everything out as a whole, you know, we have to do it or change how we make it and make it so that our bodies will actually ingest it without any suffering or pain. Yeah, all of these, like, either irk my soul, make me laugh, and then irk my soul, or I just have a brain fart and I don't know what to say to people that say these. And these are all things that have been said to me personally for the IBS, gluten intolerance, and dairy slash lactose intolerance. All over the board, these 20 things are just like a big mania, like mangled up. Like, why do you have to say these to people? Why me? Alright you guys, that is the end of today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. With all of this being said, if you really, really like this video or you, like, agreed with me and, like, we can connect on this sort of thing, feel free to give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and wet that notification bell so you will never miss another video from me. And I will surely see you guys in my next video. I love you guys so much. Thank you for dropping by my channel. And I will see you guys soon. Bye!